I was recently on a tour with a band called Calandra that I've been working with for approximately two years. And for the first time on this tour, I have been using Apple's Automator as a part of my workflow when I'm coming to a new venue and I'm setting up the 3D positions of the fixtures and storing selection grids into the groups. So I thought I'd make a little video just to explain how I use this and what I'm using it for. Just as a little demonstration, I will just show you the whole process from patching in fixtures until the 3D positions are set up and the selection grids are stored. So let's just take a look at it. After I've patched in all my fixtures, given them addresses and fixture IDs, I'll just run this macro right here. So based on the fixture ID, it will just pull the fixtures out of the patch and put them in the group they are supposed to be in. I also have this macro right here, which is just storing some A, B groups and odd even groups. We let this one run. So next thing I'm going to do now is to open the web remote and to open Apple's automator. When I'm running this, it just goes like this. And then I just run the next automator, which is for storing the selection grid, which will be this one. And now we can just go out of the web remote and we can take a look. So yeah, we can see that they look quite like they are supposed to. And if we go to, for example, say spots here, um, they have also been spaced out. If we now take our uh, wash group, for example, and we, we try to apply, say, just like a circle, and we put the matrix wings of two, phase zero through 360, we can see that, yeah, it has stored the selection grid and the phaser is running as it should. This has helped me speed up my workflow quite a lot, so I'm going to demonstrate a little bit more in detail now what I'm actually doing. Apple's Automator is a program on all Macs that lets you record a certain amount of clicks or typing in some information. It can be quite a time saver to just uh, automate all these actions. This is what Apple's Automator looks like when you open it. I'm sorry for the Norwegian language here. You're gonna just choose Workflow and then click Record and then Just stop the recording and then this will be stored as a automation. So if you now click start, see my cursor goes there and then, yeah, it does exactly what I did. So, oops. The first thing that I discovered when I tried to do this was that for some reason you can't use Apple Automator directly in Grand MA3. It doesn't know what it's doing and it crashes and it won't let you record clicks in Grand MA3. But if you open a web remote in Safari, then it works. So first thing you need to do is just go to network settings and then Take this box, which allows you to have a web remote. Open Safari. You'll go to just like your local IP address, 127.0.0.1, and then have this port like um, colon 8080, and then you will be logged into your session right there. I have created two views here called Automator Setup 3D and Automator Selection Grid. Yeah, so this one just have all my groups, um, or at least like I have grouped them into trusses. So the wash truss back, wash truss mid. And and you can see I have some macros here, like position X minus five through five and so on. So yeah, actually, let me just reset all the positions now so that we can see what's going on. Yeah, so the names of these macros is just for me to know what information to type into them. So now it has selected the first group by putting in the minus five through five on the X and then next one. Yeah, at the moment now there's nothing in this group, but when you're making the automator, it's very important that there is something in every group here because then it will be ready to apply this to whatever is in that group. So when you make the automator, fill up all the groups with whatever fixtures just so that it will apply the 3D positions to what you want and just ignore the rest. So we're clicking again, minus five through five. And then, yeah, when we have clicked all the way through all of the groups, at some point we will get to this macro and it's really just doing the same thing like selecting groups that needs to have this applied. Yeah, let's do that. And then, yeah, the same for all of this. I'm going to leave a link to a Dropbox folder where you can actually just download these macros. But depending on how you are grouping your fixtures, you probably need to just edit them a little bit because maybe you don't group them the same way that I do. But maybe it's a starting point at least. So what you want to do is to open the Apple Automator. And I have stored uh, automation here called uh, main 3D setup. And yeah, this is really just doing what we did right now, but it's playing it back in 10 times speed. So it's way faster. So if we once again now just select all the fixtures and we just set them to zero, if we now run the automator, it will just, yeah, do exactly this. So the automator doesn't know what it's clicking. 
So it's very important that you, first of all, do backups of your show file before you test this and do many backups because it will go wrong a few times at least. But uh, when you have it up and running, then, you know, it will always work. So that's good. Yeah, so the same goes for like having the same window size every time you do this. Like I work on a laptop and I work on this Mac mini and I have two different automators for it because on one the screen is smaller so then it clicks the wrong places and yeah destroys everything. And as you can see this is why I have locked these macros as well because when there's nothing stored in this group it thinks that I want to change the name of the group to position x minus 5 through 5 and we don't want that so that's very important that these are locked so that yeah nothing goes wrong. And for me this is enough to have like a range of minus five meters through five meters on all the trusses and it's approximately right in most cases. If you want to really fine tune the positions then I think this will probably save you some time as well just to at least get quite close quite fast. So the other automation I have is the selection grid. Again I have another view for this and I have a macro. What this does is to just like select the 2D top view. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. It selects a group. It unticks the preserved grid positions because I like to have my selection grids just like without spacing. It stores the same group that it selected. Next group. So my automation for this is just like, like this. And yeah, it just goes between these two. Yeah, and there you have it. So that's how I use Automator to speed up my workflow when I'm getting to venues and uh, setting up 3D positions. And yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions about it, please just write a comment and I'll try to get back to you.